Hello, my name is Del Noble. I'm a senior and this is my last semester at Southern. But it's not just students that are saying goodbye this year. Some of you may have noticed that quite a few professors and staff members are also retiring. 17 in fact. Needless to say, I was curious as to why so many were retiring at the same time. To find out more information, I went and talked to Evan Jewsbury, the Chief Human Resources Officer here at Southern. So this year um, we have a voluntary retirement incentive program. Um, it had been seven years since we had, had offered that. And basically it's a program that allows uh, retirees that are eligible for retirement under the Mosher's uh, plan to um, get an incentive for retiring. So um, those folks will receive an incentive based upon their years of service or their salary, um, whichever is higher up to a max cap. And then that allows them to, um, to claim that incentive and use it for whatever purpose they want, whether it be health insurance related, um, or just uh, you know personal investments, those kinds of things. Um, so we do have um, quite a few staff that took part in that uh, voluntary retirement incentive. So basically, when we have an influx of, of retirees, I think back to the phased retirement program, when we launched that program three years ago, um, we had a, a pretty large number of folks that, that took that program and that slowly kind of um, reduced each year. Uh, and the number of folks that, that have enrolled in that program. So I think of it similar to that. Um, this program, it's a new, new thing. We haven't had it in a while, so we had quite a few people take it. Workload-wise, obviously it definitely increases our workload because we have to meet with each one of those folks to discuss their benefits, paperwork, make sure we have everything in line. And then um, all the processing that goes into that and the behind the scenes work um, and making sure they have a smooth transition uh, to retirement. So. Um, there's a lot, a lot of paperwork and a lot of um, uh, items that have to be checked off on to make sure uh, the retiree has a, has a smooth uh, retirement. So um, it does take time for sure. So Missouri Southern, we have our state pension through uh, Mosher's, but um, we also have a variety of other uh, um, items that they uh, can take in retirement. Uh, they can port or convert their life insurance. They can um, uh, have access to our facilities here. If they have 15 or more years of service, such as the uh, Spiva Library databases, the um, uh, retiree ID card for campus events, um, keeping their car tagged, um, those types of things. Those are special to folks with 15 or more years of service. Um, but then there's other things uh, like our health center, uh, not health center, our rec center, um, that they can continue to be a part of as well. And so we have a lot of folks that choose to stay, um, you know, stay with that particular um, uh, membership, uh, even in retirement as well. We hope that we will have approval to refill uh, all of those roles. Some of them have already started that process. So um, with the current budget times that we're in, um, we're not for sure at this time if all, uh, all 17, you know, positions will be refilled. But uh, in general, we, we have seen some come through for, um, for refilling and you know, that will take some time to recruit and advertise. Um, our hope is, is that um, we get a, um, a wide diverse uh, population that apply um, for those uh, positions and then uh, the hiring committees uh, select the best qualified applicant um, for that, that position. So um, that, that's our hope, but again, that takes time. That's a process as well, recruiting, interviewing, um, and then ultimately hiring and training and those kinds of things. That's all um, takes time. So you lose a lot of knowledge when folks retire and then it takes a, a while to build that back. So there's always uh, cross training issues, those kinds of things that um, come up as well. So, so um, we had, I think one person, if I recall, that's at 30 years. So um, we just appreciate all the years of service that folks have given us. and. Um, we really hope that uh, they have a, a, a great retirement. Work as long as you, you feel like you can is my advice. Um, and, and work in a job that you enjoy, something that you, you want to come back to and, and, and that you find um, has value and purpose because that makes uh, the job that much more enjoyable. So um, if you see the reasons why um, the job is important that you're in, um, I think that makes it um, um, a better day-to-day -day experience and um, as a student just make sure that you're always continuously learning because things always change um, and just continue to um, keep up with your skill set. In HR things change daily 
Um, so we're always watching webinars and different things to keep up to date. So um, just always be a continual learner even once you've graduated. With that information in mind, I wanted to talk to someone who had made their career here at Southern. Yana Hatala was nice enough to go to talk to Judy Stiles, a veteran in the TV world with 35 plus years of experience. Here's an interview with her about her life before Southern, her career here, and what she plans to do after retirement. I came here in 1986, so almost 35 years, 34 years and eight months or so. Before I came here, I was working in television as a news producer. I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, so I was one of the behind the scenes people producing newscasts. My husband's job brought us to Joplin and then found the job here at Missouri Southern. I got a phone call one day, some, the Missouri Southern has an opening and are you interested? And it's a true story of networking where you know people because somebody who I worked with in Tulsa when I left town knew somebody here at Missouri Southern and they said, hey, we knew somebody had just moved to Joplin and they're probably looking for a job and so it was who knows who and they gave me a call and I came in and interviewed and at that time uh, I worked with both the radio and the television station and it was called Community Services Director. Well, it was different because at that time the radio and TV stations were over on the other side of campus where the alumni house is now and uh, where the York university relations and marketing offices are. And I can remember walking into the television station, which is where the university relations and marketing office, and it was a big, you know, building studio, but there were no real offices in there. And I walked in and they, you know, showing me the equipment and your desk is back there. And my desk was literally in the back of the studio behind the curtains. You know, this was my desk in the back of the studio behind the curtains with boxes and everything stored around it and I don't think I even had a phone on my desk at the time <laughs> but the radio station was next door so we had to walk outside uh, to go to the radio station and I think the thing I remember most was there was no restroom in that building for the TV station if you had you know middle of the winter time it's cold out you have to use the restroom you're dashing out in the cold to go <laughs> it varies that's the fun part about the job is each day is a little bit different um, I work, work a lot on scheduling for the station so I uh, deal with scheduling the programming what we're going to do work with the students and the staff on productions uh, work with community members, uh, trying to serve the community through things that we're doing, whether it's public service announcements, uh, coordinate station operations, and also work with long-range planning. What can we do to make the station better for the future? I really like working here because of the students. You know, that's kept me energized for 34, more than 34 years is because uh, I see the enthusiasm in students and learning and uh, they, they're taking what they're taking to their field or even if they don't go into broadcasting, hopefully they're learning something and getting those good job skills to prepare for the future. So I think that's what I've really enjoyed and um, I say it gives me energy, makes me feel young too, being around the young students. <laughs> I think be flexible. It's you know, like I said, it's not a eight to five. It's an eight to five, yes, more or less job, but it's not a sit at your desk to do the same thing routine. You be flexible, be innovative, uh, be open to new suggestions. Every year we have new ideas from students or others that let's try this or let's tr do that. So you know, look into the future. And um, something that someone always told me years ago, one of my professors many years ago, is always do excellent work. You know that you're striving for professionalism and excellent work. Organization, you know, being able to, I think I was multitasking before that became a term. You know, now everybody says, oh, we multitask all the time. But being able to do different things, handle different tasks, uh, be organized, uh, be able to work with people, um, good writing skills, I mean, that's something that carries across the board. And it developed over the years because when I started, I wasn't on the camera, my other job as a news producer. So I learned a lot about interviewing skills and communication, talking to people along those lines. I think, you know, my husband has been, my daughter, they've been very supportive of me over the years. And, you know, you know that when you go home, and you usually don't have television, you don't have work to take home with you. You might have some paperwork, or when I was teaching, I would have some grading to do and so forth. Uh, but I think, you know, you have your family life and you have your work life, and they're very supportive of what you're doing, and that really makes a big difference. I hope that we'll continue to see student productions, you know, that the station will continue to serve the community. Uh, the station has covered Joplin City Council since day one, and I think that role in the community is important for communication, what's happening in our community, so I would like to see that continuing. And I think that the station has built itself as a, a factor in Joplin. We are not just a little station at the, at the college, we are something serving the Joplin community. I'd like to see that continue. I have a sign over there on my uh, window that says, uh, when was the last time you did something for the first time? You know, this is the first time I've retired. <laughs> it's the only time we're going to retire. But, uh, you know, be prepared when you retire that it's a whole new world. And I'm learning a lot about the process, but uh, there's a lot of mixed feelings because you feel so committed to your job and the people you love the people you're working with, but you know that there's a new future in front of you as well. There's been so many. I mean, like I said, working with the students, uh, <sighs> interviews that I've done when I did the Newsmaker show. Um, it's really hard to say I had my favorite show. I just think. Uh, each year looking at what's been accomplished and saying, wow, we did it. Uh, we've had some 
the Cardinals caravan, I'm you know, looking at the Cardinals banner, uh, that was a memory that we were able to get the St. Louis Cardinals to come to Joplin and through our station contacts and uh, we were able to host those caravans and area fans came in. So that's always one of my favorite memories is seeing the fans, meeting the baseball players, having our students being able to interview the baseball players. You know, those are great memories right there. Hopefully we can travel. You know, we're hoping that you know be able to travel and uh, first of all kind of relax. But there's plenty of other things. You know, everybody says you have plenty to do around the house. Of course, I'll be doing that. But I think there's a lot of opportunities. I haven't nailed it down specifically. Like some people say tomorrow I'm leaving and I'm moving here. You know, I'm still going to be around the community. So I want to be involved in the community. You know, hopefully coming back and watching Missouri Southern sports and activities when that's allowed and being able to just be a part of our community in a different capacity. I think. Missouri Southern has a valuable resource with our television station, and, and I'm proud to say that I've been able to work here and uh, see so many people, the graduates, it's, you look at the list of people who graduated knowing that their careers are out there thanks to what Missouri Southern's offered that opportunity, and I hope that uh, the station continues to do that for our students, because we're here for the students and those job skills, the things they can learn and take elsewhere. Although it isn't just professors that are retiring this year, members from the physical plants and custodial services are also saying goodbye to Southern. One such custodian, Bonnie Branham, talked with me recently about the time she cooked for the women's dorm for Thanksgiving. I guess my most memorable moment would have to be when I was working in the girls' dorms at McCormick, and I found out a lot of them weren't going home for Thanksgiving, so I prepared them a great big Thanksgiving dinner with turkey and stuffing and potatoes and vegetables and rolls and salads and drinks and brought it to the um, to their dorms and we had Thanksgiving together over there with, you know, the, several of the girls, mm -hmm. a lot of the girls, and we had, we had a really good time. It was a lot of fun. For all those retiring this year, I, like many, wish you the best of luck. I'm sure many students will agree with me when I say, you're not just our instructors, you're our friends. And to those students who have a little bit more time before they graduate, my advice to you is to take the time to listen well to the people who keep Southern afloat and make a few friends along the way. I'm Del Noblet, and for one last time, signing off for KGCS-TV.